All right, guys. Hello, hello again. My name is Sarabi, and today we are going to go do a full breakthrough of utilizing the Meta Business Suite. Okay, so for those that don't know, the Meta Business Suite is a free tool that is used for both Facebook and Instagram. And once you get your business page set up um, on the side here, this is where my homepage for my business page is. It's this tool right here on the side that you're able to utilize to help manage your pages and check your analytics. Now, the really cool thing about this is, is it's available on desktop and it's available in a mobile version as well. So even if you need to do things or check messages or things like that on the go, you're able to do so um, completely free. Okay, so you do not have to pay for this tool. It's automatically assigned to you once you have a business account. And the only thing, if you do want to pay for like ads and such, you can, but we'll talk about that um, a little bit later on when we go through here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this. And if you guys are on your computer monitors as well and want to follow along, feel free to do so. In fact, I actually encourage that. So that way, when you're going through and you're clicking on things yourselves too, you can remember what we talked about. All right, guys. So when you click on the Meta Business Suite, um, you're going to see this as your homepage. If you manage multiple business pages, you can do this drop down menu and you can actually switch through all the business accounts that you manage. OK, so as you can see, I have several on here that I manage. Um, but right now, I'm just going to focus on strictly the travel one. And once you link your Instagram, you can actually flip through which pages that you want to look through and manage. OK, so it gives you some quick analytics here on your followers for each. So you know what your pages are doing. And if you want to like do a Facebook edit versus an Instagram edit, you can actually go to the profiles to see what it looks like in real time. Um, if you want to set to do list for yourself, you can. I don't really utilize this feature as much. I just kind of keep my own thing, but it does give you an option to do that as well. And then right here on the on the top part, if you want to do like a quick post or you know want to create something really fast, it has a quick guide here for you to just go on, click it, and then you can start creating from there. Same kind of deal here. If you have any scheduled posts, as you can see, I don't have any. Only one I had was on Monday. Uh, but if you have any scheduled posts, it will show here. And then what's cool here as well is it gives you a quick look to invite friends to your business page. So if you're trying to build your business profile, this is where you want to go on a daily basis to start getting people to follow your page. Because what it does is it's already linked to your personal page and it pulls from that list um, so that way they can you can invite other your friends from your personal page to your business page. This also applies to anybody who goes on your business page and let's say they like a post that you make or they comment on a video that you posted or something like that. If they're not already following you, you can invite them to follow you from here. So let's go ahead and click this to see if I have any new people that I can invite. And it gives you a total of a thousand people that you can invite on a daily basis. These are all the new people that um, have recently, you know, became friends with me on Facebook on my personal page. So I'm going to go ahead and click the select all right here and then invite all of them to my business page. And it's just going to send them an invite and it's easy, just as easy as that. Um, if you go down here too, if you want to, if you're a person that likes to stay updated on the tools that you use, they do give you guys updates as well on the meta business suite on what's going on. Okay. But that's basically like the homepage. It just shows you an overview of everything. Um, and it's like a quick link center where you can do like quick stuff here. Notifications, you know, we all know what notifications are. Basically they tell you what's going on with your page. Um, if somebody's tagging you in a post, if you are mentioned anywhere, it tells you all that stuff here and it categorizes it for you. So if you're directly mentioned, typically those kind of go into like the high priority because they want you to interact from your business page in that way. Or if you get messages, they want to make sure that you're responding to messages on a timely manner because they do track that and they tell on you. So if you're not responding to people in a timely manner, they're going to put on your business page on display for everybody hey, this person typically responds in like 24 hours versus like an hour or 30 minutes or whatever it is. Um, same thing, like I said, it tells you who follows you, um, how many mentions you get and things like that across both pages. Oopsies, hold on. I think somebody unmuted by accident. Give me one second. There we go. 
All right. So once you get through, we're going to go to the planner a little bit later because I'm going to show an actual demonstration of this. Um, but next is content. Okay. So this is basically what you're posting on your page, you know, what the analytics are for that, you know, the interactions that you're getting from it. If you're posting videos, how many times or how long people are actually watching your videos for. If you have any scheduled um, posts, it'll show it here. Anything that's in the drafts, basically not something that's scheduled that doesn't actually get posted, they will put it in the drafts for you. Um, and then you have the option if you want to repost it or something like that again. But basically this just tells you all of your analytics. Again, if you're a numbers person, it gives you a good amount of information versus how many people are watching it and how many people are actually just clicking on it and you know going through the clicks. So two words that I do want you guys to kind of be mindful of, you're going to see reach and then you're going to see impressions, okay? And this is across all social media, okay? When it's talking about reach, that's how many people your post or your content is going to. So how many eyes were on that actual post? When it's talking about impressions, it's talking about how many times that post was clicked on. So for example, Let's say Syria um, watched one of my posts five times. My reach is going to say one, but my impressions is going to say five. So just be aware of that. Um, if you have like an equal amount of reach versus impressions, that's kind of where you want to be because that means the people that are actually watching it are the people that are clicking on it. Um, and, you know, sometimes, you know, sometimes people like to rewatch things and things like that. Just know that the difference between the two of those. Okay. So as you can see here on some of my posts, um, like I post a lot more personal stuff now too, and my personal page is in professional mode. So I'm finding that a lot of my personal pictures are starting to go to some of my um, analytics, which is pretty cool too, because I know what's working on my personal page and it helps drive business to my business page, which is awesome. But like, for example, this picture of my daughter for Spirit Week on Monday, um, it was crazy hair day. So we see three people saw the actual post and 26 people clicked on it so maybe somebody clicked on more than once or something like that but it gives you those numbers um for videos it tells you how many people played it how many plays it got so sometimes like you know if you've ever watched a video and it had it on rerun um that means that's an extra play once it goes all the way through and it starts again it has to go all the way through for it to count as a play so that means people kept it on loop um for quite a bit of time because the reach was only three but the plays were 31 um, reactions, shares, like it gives you all the good analytics. So if you really want to know if your content is working, the numbers aren't going to lie to you. Go into your content and see what's working, what's not, and adjust from there. Same thing with stories, guys. Um, I don't have anything on my stories now, but I always typically say you want to have something posted on your story because, again, you want to apply to everybody, okay? People work night shift. If you're only having your stories, uh, on for people who are day shift and it's like at the end of the day there's nothing there for them to look at they're not going to go to your page and look and scroll one thing for sure with instagram stories and reels are things that you want to make sure you have on there if nothing else facebook eh, stories can be questionable because people are being extra on facebook when it comes to the facebook stories but definitely for instagram you want to have something on those page because a lot of people are typically categorizing their things from stories. And now when you post a story, you can actually add links in there. So if you want to add like your bio link, like for example, this is my Floco page. Every single time I post a story, I'm adding this link in there. So that way when they see the picture that I'm posting on there, they can click on my link and they can go from there and get all my affiliates. So you want to be smart about how you're marketing and use your stories to your benefits because that's a free 24 hours of marketing that you don't have to think about, okay? Does that make sense to everybody? Can I get a thumbs up? I know you guys can't unmute or anything. <laughs> all right, awesome, awesome. Okay, perfect. Uh, feed and grid is basically the comparison between your Facebook page and your Instagram page at live time. So, you know, if you want to know what your page is looking like, then that's what it's going to tell you. So that <laughs> my daughter, that her silly picture, that is the first thing that you see when you go on my page. That's what's going to be on my Instagram versus my Facebook page, where it's like my last video that I made. It was something I made using um, Canva. Okay, so you can compare the two um, in live time if that's something that you want to look at. 
mentions and tags is basically who's talking about you, you know, who's tagging you in things, who's mentioning you. Typically, I like to, I'm starting to like to pay attention to this a little bit more now. Um, because the people that I find that are actually sharing my things and, um, you know, mentioning me and like, you know, tagging me and things, um, you know, we have vouchers, throw a voucher to people who are help, you know, are helping you, um, you know, grow your business, right? So that's something, if that's something that you want to do, that's a helpful tool to figure out who's, you know, actually help supporting your business and such. And then right here, if you do like reels, which I highly, highly, highly encourage you to start doing, even if it's like a faceless and you're doing a voiceover, start doing videos at least like three times a week, because that's where a lot of platforms, especially the meta platforms are going towards and they push more original content in that way. So for example, um, if you want to have like a playlist, you know, we have free videos and backs that we can use and you can just put destination highlights, a reel or something like that, put a playlist together so people can actually just go through and watch it. Um, so that's something that you can start doing with the platforms as well. All right, next we're going to kind of get into insights, um, trying to, yeah, we're doing good on time here. Um, this is where you really want to know what your numbers are doing. Okay, the numbers are never going to lie to you and it's going to it's going to tell you about yourself. If you're posting, it's going to show you that you're posting. If you're not, it's going to show you how affected you are when you're not. So for me, right now, it's telling me about myself because I have not been posting like I should be. And it's telling me, hey, girl, listen, these are your numbers. Your reach is low. Your results are low. Like, this is what is going on. This was the past week, um, the past seven days of my insights. So let's kind of get into it. What's really awesome, and this is like one of the best updates I feel like Meta has, is it gives you a weekly plan. So they want you to be successful. They want your page, then they want you to push your page. So they give you a list of things to do that's going to optimize your business page. So for example, publish an ad. That's subjective to you. If you want to do that, go ahead. Um, in my personal experience, ads don't really perform as well. Um, but they have it on here, I think, because they want, you know, the money, but that's just a personal opinion. Um, making sure you're publishing five stories on Instagram. Like I told you guys earlier, stories on Instagram are really, really, really popular and use those links when you do it. Uh, publishing two posts on Facebook, right? You don't have to post as much on Facebook anymore um, because right now they're not really focusing on how much you're posting on there. They're focusing more on the engagements. So if you get like two or three really good engagement posts or videos out there that people are like talking about um, and you can kind of spread out that engagement out for a couple of days, that's kind of where they're, they're looking for and that's how you can push more of your things out there when it comes to Facebook. But right, literally, like it tells you all the things that you need to do to make sure that you can optimize your page based off of your current situation. And as you grow, it's going to update and give you more specialized um, tasks to kind of, you know, keep your page relevant and keep it steadily growing as well. So they do update it for you as you reach some of your milestones. So, for example, some of the other plans. Maintain, maintain, uh, maintaining a response rate. So if people are messaging you get to them back really quickly. <laughs> Cause like I said earlier, you know, they really do track that stuff and they'll tell, you know, um, other people like, hey, their response rate is low. They kind of give a percentage based off of that. Visit insights, just clicking on that, that already gave me a point to visit the insights on a weekly basis. So that way you know how your page is performing. Um, and then they give you a history of like, you know, the past weeks and um, how you performed on those past weeks. So really, really cool thing that Meta is doing now. I love the plan because like I said, they make sure that you can optimize your page to the best of your ability. Now for results here, you can actually set goals for yourself. So um, the past month I did set a goal where I wanted to increase my reach by 25%. Um, for Instagram, definitely working. I'm almost at my goal. Facebook, not so much. Um, and it tells you, you know, my reach that I had based off of my posting. So it doesn't take brain science to know that clearly my reach is going down because like I said, I have not been posting. So it's telling me, hey girl, like, listen, your reach is going down. You need to post more and get those reach back up because it was actually doing pretty well earlier when I was being consistent. So it'll tell you, you know, what your numbers are doing. And it was really cool too, on your peak days, you can actually go through and see, what was posted on that day based off of like the content. 
Um, when you go and look, you could be like, okay, this performed really well this day. Why did it do that? And when you see those those peaks, you want to start posting things more like that. So it can be more of like a linear kind of graph instead of like a spiky one. But that's really when you're really testing out to see where your content is working versus which ones aren't. Um, how many visits are going to your page, um, you know, profile visits, things like that, followers versus non-followers. Um, as you see here, it's been steady for Instagram, it's kind of up and down a little bit. Ad trends, like I said, if you pay for ads, you can. I don't, um, I did try it in the beginning, and like I said, um, it didn't really work out for me, so I don't pay for ads anymore, but some agents that do, you know, boost some of their ads that are already doing well, they say that they're very successful at it. So it really just depends on your page and the audience that you have. Now that brings me to audience. <laughs> See that transition there? Um, this is where you really want to kind of, when you're in the beginning stages of trying to formulate what kind of page you're going to have, you want to study the audience because you want to center your initial page around the analytics of everybody that's on Facebook, okay? This is prior to, you know, discovering your niche and all that stuff. Um, once you discover, you know, the audience that you actually want to market to for your business and the kind of people you want to market to, then you can kind of start specifying and kind of catering your content towards them. But when you're first starting out, like, this is where you want to start, okay? This is like the bare framework here. So analytics, how many people are on Facebook at a given time, right here, that's the audience size. Demographics, men versus women, age ranges, right? You'll be surprised at how many 60 year olds are actually on Facebook. They're mostly the ones that are commenting under your under your pages, you know, saying inappropriate things that they could have texted you, right? So there's a lot of people that you think that may not be on there, but they actually are. And you would think, you know, younger people, this is actually changing over the time, like, Younger people are actually going more to TikTok and Instagram and things like that. And it's more of like the, I don't want to say the older generation. I would say we're going to say seasoned generation is <laughs> still here on Facebook, you know, connecting with family and things. And then at the bottom here, you have the top cities. So when you hear top cities, you, this is where you kind of want to focus on what groups that you're joining initially so you can start getting that reach. So right off the bat, New York, New York, Houston, LA, top three cities, top three groups that you want to start marketing to, right? You know, those um, travel groups, the buy, sell, and trade groups, things like that. Start posting into groups around those regions and the small cities that are surrounding those regions as well. Start building your network and then moving outward. Um, if you want to focus on one state per month, and like I said, hit up every single zip code that's within that actual city, you can do it that way. It's really up to you but it gives you the bread and butter right here that you can utilize so you can start growing your business and your audience quickly. Same thing with here with top pages, guys. If you are low on your followers and things with your Facebook business page, you wanna get into these top pages and start interacting with other people who are commenting. Now, don't do this with other travel agencies, okay? The, give it the side eye doing that. But like Walmart, Target, like things like that where people is like, everybody is there. Um, you know, find a post that you like on Target and be like, oh man, this will be amazing for my office or this would be a cool gift for a client or something like that. Interact as your business page. So that way when people are reacting to it, liking it, commenting it, they're going to click on your business page and then they can see what you do. And that's how you can lure them in that way. So this is another way that you can utilize these pages indirectly to start gaining followers and audiences that are not directly linked to your, um, your friends list as well. Um, so good ones to start with as well. Tipsy Bartender is one of my favorites. Um, you'll find a lot of um, people who want to do adult-only stuff with Tipsy Bartender's page. So, you know, find different pages like that. Um, maybe even if you're on Instagram, um, brand deals is something that's super cool. So if you find travel influencers that are willing to work with you, um, set up a meeting. You know, that can be something that you can utilize and apply that to the Instagram platform as well because Instagram doesn't have groups. They just have influencers, they have pages, brand pages, things like that. Um, and if you didn't know, all brand companies, they have a budget for, you know, people who are looking for brand deals and, you know, budgets for that. So they try to tell you that they don't have one, they're lying. So just, you know, just be open. Um, and, you know, that can be another way you can gain business as well. Again, messaging, you know, when people are messaging you directly, you want to respond back to them. 
um, because it gives you a grade. Don't have any on here right now, so it's not going to give me a grade or a percentage or anything. But if you leave people on red, it's going to affect your scores, and it's, they're not going to push your um your content out or like your message board out for things like that. Because if you're not responding to people, then they're going to say, okay, this person isn't responding. I'll push somebody else who's similar to, up to the FYP page and do it that way. So keep in mind, there's going to be a lot of spammers and things. Um, just be sure you have certain stuff in place. So that way, when the message does come in and say you can't check it right away, you know, um, it'll filter out. So, you know, you can check it later and you still have your percentages up. So I'm gonna click on this really quick on the inbox so I can show you how to do that because this happens a lot with Instagram mostly. It's just, people are always gonna be like this person right here. See, first thing, <laughs> um, they want to get in your inbox and ask you things. And I didn't send this, the computer sent it because my automations are set up. Um, I always like leave it on here just to like look at it later. And then once I'm done and I figure out what it is, then I just move it to spam and it doesn't affect my score. But you want to click on this little neutron button here, automations. And if you want to like put on keywords, like let's say um, somebody messaged you, how much do you charge or how much is it to book with you or something like that? And you charge a fee that you can put a question like that in the F um, FAQs of your Insta replies, like frequently asked questions, and it's going to have an automated response to send to that person that you set ahead of time if they're asking you. Um, you can do that if you want. I I did it once, um, but like I have since changed some of my policies and things, so I haven't set this back up yet, but it was very helpful for those who are inquiring about certain things, and they can get a response right away and still contact you, uh, continue contacting you because you responded to them right away. But right here on the instant reply, this is the greeting that I was talking about here. I have it set for both um, Messenger and Instagram. And it's a basic, just a, a basic little saying. I didn't come up with the words, it came up with this automatically. And this is what it says to people. Um, if I wanna change it, I can put my branding on there, I can and switch it on and you're good to go. Okay, so just make sure that at least the instant reply greeting is on just so that way, you know, again, your messages and things, um, they stay at 100%, okay? All right, um, overview is basically what your page is doing, what kind of content is working for you in the categories. So not necessarily looking at your post per se, but the type of post and what is gonna work for your page or not. So Facebook is constantly changing, right? Before on my previous videos, links were like dead last. But now they're first. So anytime I post something with my links, um, I'm finding I'm getting more of those engagements and things that I'm looking for. So links, images, videos, just text, it gives you a category of, you know, um, how much reach you're getting based off of per post. Then engagements for that last 90 days, it gives you like, you know, a comparison side by side. And then, you know, post median reach for your content. So reels, again, like I said, are doing really, really well. Um, in addition to links and things. Same thing with engagement for Facebook, um, text engagements, all that good stuff. It gives you very, very good analytics to help you know what type of content is working for your page. Same thing with Instagram, you know, videos, reels are always gonna be top tier with Instagram. Um, engagements, not so much as high as Facebook, um, but the videos and reels are still getting, you know, pretty good views and things. So just kind of good to know when you look at that. And then this is more, again, more of a deep breakdown of your content, analytics, things like that. When you posted it, um, what I really want to go into, though, is for the videos. I really like how they break down the way the videos work. So they tell you all the business of how many people are post are watching your video up to how long they're watching it, up to, you know, if they're followers or not, if they're, you know, people who, you know, just came in and just watched your page out, out of nowhere. And then what I like here again, is like, it tells you what you're doing and how it can grow your audience and keep your reach going up. So sharing three to four times a week may help your audience engage. When right now, you know, I have the one that I posted. So again, like it gives you really, really, really good analytics on if you're doing video content, how to really expand on that. Same thing with loyalty, 
the follower activities you're getting new followers versus you know followers that you may not have anymore and then the audience that's actually watching your page so if you have more non-followers watching your page then you want to try to figure out how to get those non-followers to follow you right so it tells you that information right now it's about half and half right now and then retention is basically how long they stay on your video so that's going to be a good analysis on how engaging that video is so you can do more of that kind of thing okay um, so that's pretty much insights. Like I said, if you're a numbers person, it really makes things easy and they all have this export data. So if you want to print this out, like on a quarter basis or a monthly basis, um, you can do that if you like that type of thing. Um, but it does give you good information to really grow your pages there. Um, if you want to go into, let's see, we did inbox monetization and eh, we can, we can skip monetization for now. We, if we have time at the end, um, we'll do that, but let's go ahead and get into this planner. <clears throat> Cause this is where the lifesaver comes into play. <laughs> We're going to look at this on the monthly view. Um, basically this gives you the grace to be able to post, um, and schedule posts ahead of time. Okay. They give you 28 days up to the date you're posting. So this is a six. So 28 days past the six, I can schedule my posts ahead of time. And you know who, it makes sense why that's helpful, right? Like if you're going on vacation, right? Or if you just don't have time to be on social media every day, like that is something that is super, super duper helpful because you can really make sure your page is staying automated and you're doing more of the, you know, working with clients and things like that. You don't have to worry about marketing as much. So I'm going to just show you my February because I didn't do March yet. But right here, like as you can see, all of these on here, most of these are the stories that I have that I normally have scheduled. Um, and a lot of the posts that I had scheduled prior to, you know, the dates actually being there. Um, did all of this in maybe a, I would say a two day span. I did stories one day and then I did my actual post another day but it really, really helps you free up a lot of time when you actually schedule it out ahead of time. So I'm gonna show you how we can do one here. I'll just make a post for tonight. Um, right here on the side, it says create post. But if you click this arrow, if you wanna create a story, you can. If you wanna schedule a reel, you can. Um, bulk upload videos, I have not did that one yet. Kind of curious to see how that will work, but um, I haven't clicked on that one yet. That one is new to me. Uh, but if you want to post a video across pages, you can do that as well, or you can go live directly here from the Meta Suite. But for right now, I'm just going to go ahead and click on create a post just to keep it simple here. And um, what's really cool is they do give you analytics based off of, you know, when people are more likely to be on your page at a given time or on when your followers are more likely to engage at a given time. So let me go ahead and cancel this really quick so I can show you that. So you see this little number right here? This is a recommendation. So basically based off of my audience and you know when they're on Facebook or Instagram at a given time, this is a peak time that they have the peak engagement, uh, which is when they recommend you post things. Same thing with like over here, they have a lot of different little suggestion times that you can do based off of your actual personal audiences. So that's really cool. But let me go back on here. <laughs> so um, I am going to go ahead and post. Let's see, what am I going to post? Let's find something in VAX. Because why not, right? Oops. Let me pause the share really quick. Can't be putting our agency number out there, right? <laughs> All right. So I don't know about you guys, but I use Vax to steal a lot of things, um, content mostly. My favorite thing is to go into the compass and look at what different little articles they have based off of my niche and kind of go from there. So that's what we're going to do. We are going to steal um, an article and kind of make it into a social media post. So I'm going to go on here, the compass on backs. And my niche is family travel. So you can see I type that in a lot. 
Let me see. What article have I not used yet? <laughs> um, I did that one. Let's see here. Let's look on page five because I feel like I will be scrolling for a while here. Uh, why cruise is ideal? Da, 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 da. That's not what I'm looking. Family Halloween fun. No, what I'm really looking for is the ones that kind of have like a a four to five kind of list. I have that one already. Jeez. Okay, here we go. We're gonna do this one. Seven U.S. cities that are perfect for family travel. I like to look for ones that have a list because they have pictures that I can put in like a carousel format with a nice little blurb and then my link. Um, so right here, all I'm going to do is literally steal all of these pictures. I'm going to just say V1 for my downloads. Now, on a normal day, I would actually read this to see what kind of information is on there. But since we are training, I'm going to kind of paraphrase things a little bit. Um, let's see what time it is. Yeah, I'm not going to have time to go through the whole chat GPT thing. So we're just going to wing it. <laughs> I haven't did that in a while. So we'll see how this goes. All right. Is, it, is that P6? No, it's P5. Look at me. Can't count anymore. Lord have mercy. Oh, San Diego's on the list. Okay. That's my hometown. Not mad at that. All right, and San Diego, D7. All right, so now that I got all my pictures, and yes, I'm gonna use all seven pictures because images are still good. And one thing about images that you post in like picture format, you can easily turn that post into a reel as well. So um, the more pictures, the better for video formats. And then for posts, Typically, four to five is good, but I'm going to just go ahead and do the whole seven. Um, and then what we're going to do, I'm literally just going to copy and paste this because, look, we can post this article on Facebook. So it's not like I'm, well, I am plagiarizing a little bit, but I'm still encouraging them to read the article in a certain way, Okay. Uh, <laughs> later on, I am going to post the actual article so people can see it. But for right now, I'm just going to kind of copy this right here, kind of give it a title here. Uh, here are seven cities. And like I said, normally I would kind of put that first blurb into ChatGPT and have it paraphrase for me uh, just a little bit. I might still do that anyway. Cities you can take your ah, family to this summer, right? All right. Actually. I'm gonna kind of cut this down a little bit because I don't like really, really super duper long posts. Visit www.hermanitybacations.com to learn more. And since I'm stealing pretty much this information, I'm gonna utilize this link right here and I'm gonna put it in my travel blog. So that's how that's gonna work. I'm gonna link it that way about what you can do in each of these cities. All right, so let's go ahead and start listing them. What was the first one again? Gatlinburg, copy and paste. This is a fun part, yay. And I'm going to try to make sure I put those pictures in order. That's why I numbered them the way that I did. Do -do -do. 
Papi. Now, if you guys have questions while I'm doing this, go ahead and type it in the chat box so that way when we do our Q&A, um, I can kind of go down the list. Um, and don't forget, because I definitely will. <laughs> All right, two more guys, bear with me. And you know, it's cool too, because when you guys are doing like your posts on your business page, you don't want to oversaturate it with like travel special after travel special. You want to break it up with some kind of useful information as well, just because, you know, when people see sale after sale after sale after sale, and that's all you offer, like, you know, chances are they're not going to go to your page because, you know, that gets disinteresting after a while. So every now and again, if you have like um, an email where you're subscribed to like, you know, travel news and things, I post some of those articles. It really does go a long way. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and add my food cubes. Oops. Okay. Drag the rest open. And because Facebook or not Facebook, Instagram is wonky on their resolutions and ratios. Um, they want perfect square photos, so sometimes they don't always fit on there, but it's an easy fix. Once all of them load, you can just crop it to make it a square and call it a day. Super, super duper easy fix. So I'm going to just hit this crop tool. I'm going to hit square. Click on all of them and literally just hit square for all of them because Instagram is silly. All right, I'll Bam. Problem solved. I got my call to action. I got the information, a nice little blurb. Um, I'm going to add an emoji to add some color to it, like a sun or something. Or a sun and a sunrise or water. That's fine. Um, and now I can either choose to publish it now or I can schedule a date and time to publish it later. So, you know, during the active times, that's a really good one. There's no active times on Facebook, but tomorrow at eight, don't want to wait that long. So if you do want to schedule your things ahead of time directly on a certain post, you can do that. I'm just going to go ahead and publish this now just to have something updated on my page. And this is what it looks like. So when you are doing your pictures, if you want to say, if say you want to like move things around, um, you can do that. So if you're doing like um, an inspiration kind of post, like you can control what pictures are on the top here. This is showing four, but when you actually look at a Facebook image, the first five pictures are the first five that are showing, and then it's going to have the plus however many numbers on the fifth picture. So just keep that in mind. Um, I like to put the fourth one in the middle. Like if, let's say you're doing like a five picture mock booking or something like that. The picture at the bottom in the middle is normally like the third one, which is normally like the fourth picture. So that's like a good one to put like an aerial view or like a pool or something kind of shock factor. And then the first two are a little bit bigger. So that just kind of comes with practice as you guys post more, but just little side note there when you guys do it. Um, why is it not letting me post it now? Oh, because I had that clicked on. <laughs> there we go. So now I can publish that and it's going to go both to my Facebook and my Instagram page. Um, so once that's done posting, um, I am going to actually go in on my actual website, link that article onto my website on my travel blog. And then, you know, when people go on there, when they click the learn more part, um, they actually can learn more about the different destinations and stuff. So right here, you can see it posted, the date it posted, and then again, if you want to do that for a majority of them, they're going to show all your posts that you have on there in real time. Okay, so 
very, very helpful tool to planner. Um, one of my favorite things that they have on the Meta Suite. And again, you can plan up to 28 days in advance. Now they do have other resources here. So if you click on this button that says all tools, this is just the whole arsenal of all the tools that MetaSuite has to offer. So you can literally go in here, play around, click on Inspiration Hub, right? All the cool things on here. If you wanna work on your forms, like let's say like a travel request form or something, they actually have forms in here that you can do. Um, so super duper amazing little tools that they can utilize um, that you can, you guys, go in and play with a little bit more. Um, and then also to make sure that you link Instagram, you do have to go and do that through here, through the settings tab. So that way you have access to both Facebook and Instagram. Um, so now guys, that's pretty much the whole overview that I have for everybody. I am gonna go ahead and allow y'all to unmute now. If you guys have questions, let me change my settings here. All right, so if you guys have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat um, or we can go ahead and unmute yourself. Any material in previous videos that isn't gonna be covered tonight. Oh, that was at the beginning. Sorry, I didn't see that too late. <laughs> hey, Syria. Hey, Rocks. Hello, hello, hello. You have 2% followers from India. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they like to go on our page and surprisingly, if you check your website analytics, they do go on your website too. I will now set up an auto response. I didn't know I can do that. So thanks for showing us. Absolutely, Janine. How can I send requests for someone to follow my accounts? Can you do that on Meta? Yes. So right here on the um, homepage, right here where it says invite friends, if they're interacting with your account, then you can invite them here. Um, or if they're new friends on your business or personal page, you can invite them from here as well. Good question. Thank you. Had no idea they had all these things. You know how I feel about Meta. I know. That's why I'm glad you hopped on. Because <laughs> uh, they definitely have been updating a lot of stuff, which is pretty cool. Um, apologies, if you've already stated this, can you schedule posts to your personal page or just your business page? If your account is in professional mode on your personal page, then yes, you can do that from your phone, um, but you cannot do that under the meta platform. They don't have meta for like the personal pages, but for your, like, your business page, they do. Yeah, so I can't schedule anything under my personal page, but it does give me like information. Like if I'm posting on my personal page, it does give me analytics, but I can only access that from my phone. I can't access that on the computer. Great, thank you. You're welcome, you're welcome. How do you change to a professional mode? Oh, professional mode. Um, Hold on. Let me go on here because I don't wanna lie to you. <laughs> so I believe I clicked menu on like the far bottom right side on my phone mm. oh yes and then you go you click on settings and if you scroll down to I don't think you can see that but it says audience and visibility the second thing says professional mode. You can switch it on that way and click on professional mode and then you'll be able to see the analytics and stuff. But you can schedule to personal posts in professional mode. Yep, yeah, on your phone you can, yes. But it's not, it doesn't link with Meta though. That's something separate. Do, do, do. do we have any more questions? Or do you guys want um, to go through another? Yeah. Yes, I have one. Um, I didn't see how did you get to the, the bags? How did you go to the to back bags uh, to get the pictures and everything? Um. So right here under the compass. I clicked on the compass on backs 
And then I just typed in the search bar family travel because that's my niche. And it pulled up a bunch of articles related to family travel. And I just found one that I liked. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So again, like, you know, a lot of these articles, they give you links to where, let's say, if I wanted to post this onto my Facebook, I could. Um, like right here directly to my business page, I can post it and it has the information on there. Um, you know, if you want to copy the link, those are really good for websites if you want to put that on there. But yeah, very, very helpful. Let me close this mm -hmm. before I accidentally close the real. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, for multiple days, I've only found that I can make one scheduled post at a time. I've been able to post multiple days um, on my personal page. So I've had up to a week so far scheduled on my personal page with posts that I've done and then also posted into groups scheduled. So um, I don't know, maybe try it again. Maybe it's an update. <laughs> Can you invite people to your page any other way? So yes, if you go directly through your business page, let me go to edit Facebook page, manage on Facebook. So if you don't want to go through like the meta suite to do that, you can actually go through here where it's like three dots on your actual homepage here and hit invite friends. And then you can do it that way too. Oh, it's gonna make me switch to my personal and do it. So let me switch. Mm -hmm. That's right, I forgot about that part. You'll switch back to your personal and then you can invite that way. So let me show you guys that really quickly here. All right, so now I'm acting as myself, but I'm still on my business page like as a viewer. So right here, I can invite friends and then it's gonna have a drop down menu of people if I have people to invite um, on here. But since I did it earlier, I don't have any new people to invite. And it tells you who you already invited. So if someone was like, oh, I didn't get the invite, you'll be like, yeah, you did. <laughs> um, like I said, I, I like that it tells on people. You have time to show that away from yeah it's on my phone i can't show it on my phone unfortunately you're so welcome moana thank you for joining all right do we have any more questions we have a lot more time than i thought we were gonna have you're so welcome and this is going to be posted onto my YouTube channel, so I can give you guys that really fast. Um, again, I do have other trainings and things on there. Right now, all of my videos are unlisted. I mean, not unlisted, are public. Um, so if you have, <laughs> if you guys have any kind of like idea of what you need social media wise, right now they are all public, but they're not going to be public forever. I just haven't gotten around to re-unlisting all of them. So let me get my channel. All right. So here is my channel guys. And um I am gonna be adding another one for website building for Travelify, which is something I've been working on, but right here, guys, I have all of my videos, branch up, mock bookings, all of my older videos that I've done, um, including the meta business suite ones that I did before. So these ones are still on there as well. Hmm. But yeah, I put that in the chat for you guys. Um, if you guys don't have any other questions, thank you so much for joining me. Today. Oh, go ahead. Hi. Yeah. Um, how you doing? Can you please show me how you went how you go through the um box to compass and to your content, please? So you wanna see where I got it? Yeah, I know you went through Vax and then um compass. Yeah, and then okay, the compass, okay. 
and then the compass on backs. Yeah, then I did that. Yeah. And then from there, I just type my niche um, right okay. here. Family travel. But they do have a bunch of different things already that pop up for you. I just make it easier for myself. <laughs> okay, cool. Thank you. Absolutely. And they have other resources in VAX too. Um, like, you know, travel resources, travel inspo tool toolkit. Um, they have a lot of different things you can use, but I use this one most mostly just because there's so many different articles and so many people use some of the same kind of memes and things on here and you already. Um, so, you know, it's less likely that you're going to get the same article that somebody else used when you're doing that. Okay, thank you. No problem. Love it. Absolutely. Does your branch of video go over LinkedIn? So I do have my branch of link to LinkedIn, but I do not have a link to Facebook anymore. Because again, um, with branch up, because a lot of agents are using it and a lot of page agents are on there right now, Facebook is now starting to suppress some of the, the content on people's pages that use branch up because it's kind of getting closer to viewing as spam since a lot of people are using those same kind of posts. So um, I took it off my page and my reach actually has been growing since I took it off because Facebook is no longer suppressing my business page. Hmm. So if you have a okay. setup. up, um, I would say until you're getting to a point where you're posting consistently, like, you know, utilize it until you're posting consistently and then, you know, unlink it from Facebook. <laughs> Your page will thank you for it. Interesting. I have a set with Facebook, but never did LinkedIn. Yeah, I just have it set with LinkedIn because I am pretty much, I don't go on LinkedIn. I just use it to keep myself like relevant on there. They post just enough to be like, oh yeah, you know, that person there, but um, gotta get better at that part. <laughs> now, if LinkedIn actually made a partner with the business suite, then that would be amazing because then I can schedule my posts with them, but I have to think about posting them. Thank Branch you, Sarah. This me. was um, very helpful. Absolutely. Thank you for joining. Branch up is was only showing three suppliers and even all were selected to post not loving it. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just not what it used to be, honestly. Does your recording show how to set up your LI? My LI. I'm just gonna unmute. <laughs> I meant does your does your recording show how to set branch up to your LinkedIn? Like I have LinkedIn, but I'm in the same same thing. Like I come from the days where you needed a college email address to get onto Facebook. And then I stopped there. Like I, I had Facebook and then I'm like, all right, I don't need to learn any other social media. So I have a LinkedIn, but I don't, I can't tell you like what my username is or any of that. No, I don't think I recorded it, but you know what? We can just do a quick little walkthrough. Okay. I appreciate that. So of course. Um, so when you actually, let me stop, let me stop recording first.